Hello everybody, this is Double Pulse and welcome back to another commentary video. So I think it is fair to say that the PS4K, the upgraded PS4, or what they're now calling it, Codename Neo, is officially a thing. Now I'm still waiting for that official announcement by Sony, and I imagine we'll probably get some sort of announcement by E3, and that the console probably release in about, what, October before the PSVR, but let's be honest here, the writing was on the wall from the beginning. Um, I don't necessarily like the idea. I think that a number of people are going to agree what they're going to have to say here. But I really think that the PlayStation 4K or the upgraded PS4 should have been the original PS4 that we have now. I really do think that. Because I was looking at the specs on the, uh, the plat, you know, the... The, spec the specs on the website of what's being rumored right now. And it's still a rumor, but it's a pretty damn strong rumor here, I'm assuming. And the GPU, the CPU is kind of the same. And the HD, uh, what, the, the hard drive is slightly the same as well. Just slightly upgraded. Like, they've up the megahertz, I think, a bit. Uh, the... Um, the GPU is the same, just with more compute units. So instead, it's like a CU of 36 units versus the original being 16. I'll leave a link in the d description below so you guys can read it. And with that being said, though, I think that the PS4, when it originally came out, Sony was on a time crunch, and we what we got was pretty underpowered when you kind of compare it to a low, medium, and a gaming PC. Now, with that being said, though, I think that the 7th gen consoles were definitely running out of fuel as well, and we weren't entirely sure how long these consoles were going to last. I mean, hell, a lot of the later games that were coming out for the PS3 and merging into the PS4 suffered some serious issues. But I really think that the PS4 could have probably been pushed a year later. And... And the issue with that, though, is a lot of people are on this next-gen craze and they wanted something new and fresh. But it's now, unfortunately, that this new, fresh, brand-new console is already getting tired after two to three years old when the older consoles of the uh, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 of the 7th gen lasted almost a good decade. Now, I will argue and say that I think console generations probably on average last about five to six years uh, i think that's what it was for the playstation 2 and xbox original um but one of the other things i've noticed another youtuber was talking about uh he was mentioning how the uh, the economy back then was kind of down the shitter or at least which is why we got such a long uh, seventh gen cycle and that we really should be on the net the ninth generation of consoles and this is kind of where my complaint about technology moving too fast comes into play don't get me wrong i like tech i like how fast tech is moving in some ways i enjoy tech and i'm always around the corner waiting to see what the next thing is <clears throat> but the cost of moving way too quickly with technology is that other companies kind of have to keep up and push their hardware and software to the very limits to give what the public has demand for. So, while also making this kind of very affordable. So we're kind of like in this supply demand thing where we want the newest tech. We want it now! We want it now! And then we see prototypes and we see things that are less powerful and then we bitch and complain and saying, why is this shit not that powerful. I expect that greatness awaits. Greatness awaits. And I think this is what the PS4K is going to be bringing us. It's going to be bringing us the true new PS4 experience. Because some of these games aren't even running at 1080p. Or, and they're running at 900p. Which I really don't give a shit too much about, honestly. I mean, I care, but not like to the extremists that other people have. But before I go, I go any further into my soapbox rant, the PS4K or the PS4 Neo... Sony seems to understand that splitting the consumer base is a bad idea. I agree with that. But with Sony's limitation that every game must work on both consoles, they have some sort of limitations here to make sure they work with both things. It kind of makes me wonder, at what point will the PS4K start holding back? Or no, what is it? How the original PS4 is going to start holding back the performance of the PS4K. 
So, like, you get what I'm saying? You know, like, with PC games and shit like that, you know, uh, with, they, they do console parody sometimes where, oh, we want to make sure the, the quality of the games kind of matches, so I know the consoles are kind of weak, but we're going to make the PC version slightly weaker so we can keep that, you know, yeah, thing. The, the consoles kind of hold the PC platform back a little bit. It's an, the fortunate truth, and it's I wish it wasn't that case, but hey, it sometimes is, and we have to just deal with it. And many people have said this, and I'll say it too, the beauty of having a console is that it's one piece of hardware to work with, and it makes everything easier. Which is why I find it kind of weird, though, like, I understand to some extent. Some game developers are apparently complaining about the new PS4K. I'm going to go into the uh, little bit of details before I end the video here on some of the article points that I wanted to make. So, from what we know, DualShock 4 is going to remain as the primary controller. I'm taking this off of Eurogamer and the uh, Digital Foundry had talked about how the PS4K Neo and the original ones are going to coexist. Uh, 1080p is mandatory minimum display resolution. I think that should be it already. Uh, Sony is keen to push developers on using higher resolution and super sampling to full HD as an option, but 1080p is the lowest pixel count allowed. No on online segregation between consoles. Um, if the PS entitle supports online features, they must be deployed equally on both systems. Developers cannot have Neo only servers. We believe that this may actually induce, uh, introduce gameplay balances. But if, say, the Neo hits 60 FPS while the PS4 version is capped at 30, uh, you know, save data, cross platform, affordable forward compatibility patches, uh, all this thing, you know, the fact that it, the system might be smaller. But, um, yeah. Developers complaining about it, I think the thing with that is they're kind of worried that they are going to have to put more resources and more time into it. But you're doing that with PC already. So I don't understand the huge gap or the huge issue with this. But I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of this idea either because I don't know what it's going to come. I'm, I don't know. I'm scared of it a little bit, but I'm slightly open. I mean, I don't want it turning into a thing where, you know, where they can get away with suckering people into buying new consoles every two to three years if you catch my drift. I don't want it to turn into an Apple situation where people are buying the new consoles uh, for fucking, for pretty much almost the same shit that we're getting. And that's the kind of the biggest complaint that I have with this. And that is why I think that, hey, if Sony would have planned their moves carefully or maybe pushed it back a year, but hey, we are impatient people, we might actually have the PS4K right now in our living rooms. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end the video here. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, be sure to leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. And I will leave the links in the description below so you guys can read out on that. I don't want to get into all the details because I'm sure many other YouTubers have covered it. But I love you guys to death, and I will talk to you guys soon. Goodbye.